Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to let you all come on in. Um, let a few of you join us. Praise the Lord. I pray that you had a wonderful, um, a wonderful day today, a wonderful Monday, even though here in Nashville it was a cloudy day. But thanks be to God, we are alive and well. Are you alive and well? Praise the Lord. Alrighty, so as always, we open, let's open with prayer, and then I have a treat for you today. We're going to see um, the video premiere of my honey's video, um, video of his uh, song that he just, another song he just released called Hallelujah We Sing. Then we'll worship to that, and then we'll dig into the Word of God, okay? Alrighty, um, let's pray together, okay? So, Heavenly Father, I just exalt your name. I give you praise and glory for this day. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you are, all that you um, could ever do for us. We bless and worthily magnify your holy and righteous name. We honor you today, Jesus, and we thank you, God, for being the font of all wholeness, for being the, the beginning and the end of everything. Now, Father, I just apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon every one of the people, every one of your children, everyone, Lord God, whose ears hear this. I just uh, apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon their spirit, soul, and body, financially, physically, socially, upon all the assets that belong to them. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon their spirit, souls, and body. I declare that the blessing shield surrounds you, that the favor of God is surrounding you as with a shield. I declare Them. I thank you that just as Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, we grow in wisdom and stature. Bless your name, Jesus. Father, I thank you that you have, through your son Jesus, been made unto us wisdom. I thank you for your wisdom, Lord. For your word says in James that if we, ask, if we lack wisdom, we can ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. So we thank you, Jesus. For your wisdom. We thank you, Jesus, for being made wisdom unto us. Father, we thank you that we even have unctions from the Holy One and we know all things. We thank you, Lord God, that um, because Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, that we have wisdom on the very inside of us and not just um, any old wisdom, God, but wisdom from you because the the word of God says that the Holy Spirit searches the mind of God to tell us things to come. So, Father, we thank you for the things to come. And now, right now, Lord, your word says in Timothy that we're to pray for those who are in leadership. So, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over the power of the enemy operating in um, the presidential campaign. We take authority over the um, of power of the enemy operating in any leadership role that could be from um the house and senate the supreme court every bench of the court every everyone who has anything to do with um the care of someone else um i even hear the lord saying those who are um wardens jesus uh, i hear wardens today so we um uh, Take authority over the power of the um, prisons, over jail cells, over those that are there. We call um, every person that is over anyone's care from the kingdom of darkness of life. Host of heaven, we come.
command you now to go before us, pull down every stronghold, shatter every platform, cancel every plan and plot of the enemy to come against us in the name of Jesus to come against them to come um against your people father for it said your word says that we're to pray for those who are in leadership so that we live peaceful lives so we thank you lord god that um as we stand praying we have no ought in our heart against anyone why because the word of god says that we are to um Cast all of our cares upon the Lord, for he cares for us. Therefore, because we don't carry care, we have no care, we are able to pray and our prayers are not hindered. So we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your love for prisoners, God. We thank you for those who, Father, are incarcerated uh, we're well, not we thank you for them but we thank you for the deliverance God of those who are incarcerated in Jesus name father I thank you that they may be in behind um a cell Lord God but I declare them to be made whole in Jesus name I declare that they know who they are and whose they are in the name of Jesus father I thank you Lord God that as they are sleeping upon their beds their bunks or whatever they sleep on Lord God I thank you that you bombard every prison every every inmate Lord God with who you are the real authentic you father I thank you that they have experienced experiences with you and not only those that are incarcerated um in jail but those that are incarcerated lord god that are out that are living uh walking among us those that are incarcerated in their minds by the enemy having buried them alive and by the enemy um ha having um um shackled them we just call freedom jesus we call forth freedom for the word of God says that that the word, the truth of the word sets us free. And Jesus, who you set free is free indeed. And we thank you, Lord God, for the truth of your word setting us free. We thank you, Jesus, for freedom in you, God. Freedom, not the, the type that the world calls freedom, where that we can do and say anything we want to, but God, freedom in you. Father, I just call believers to awaken and to arise unto the voice of Father God. I call us as the believers of Christ Jesus to wake up to vote as though we know who God is. We thank you, Jesus, that we are first of all believers and believers of the most high God, not of any other God, but of the most Hi, God, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that we vote Christian principles in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree all those who are shackled, all those who have been blinded by the enemy, be free in the name of Jesus so that we can see a thing for what it is, Lord God. So we can see evil and, and call it evil, but not see evil and call it good. Father, I thank you, Jesus, that the blinders are off of our eyes in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every believer will have an experience with you throughout this election process, throughout this season that we're in, throughout this time of, of, um, of COVID, of separation of six feet apart, this time of family, Lord God, where you have families that are coming together. I declare and decree that families will arise and that no one in households shall be um shall be taken by the enemy but we declare that you and your household shall be saved we declare that you and your household shall come out of poverty and out of lack out of stinking thinking god and that we will come into the fullness of who god is who has he has created us to be in the name of Jesus. And we agree. Do you agree with me? We agree according to Matthew 18 and 19. And there are more, I'm very sure, than two people watching at this time. So we agree and it shall be done by our Father. Not 
because we're so good, but because these are the promises of God and he never promises something that he cannot fulfill. So we thank you, Jesus. We honor you today, Lord, and we bless your holy name. Amen and amen. All righty. Are you invigorated? Are you rejuvenated? All right. We arise unto Father God. Now let's go into a time of worship. Raise your hands. You can even move around. But take this time to bless the name of the Lord. To hallelujah we sing.
Enjoy that. Wasn't that an awesome time of worship? Praise the Lord. And you can, um, if you want to, you can go on to all of the, what is it, streaming things and find the song for Hallelujah We Sing. And you can also go to our YouTube page, um, which is Pursuit for His Presence. And you can see the video as much as you want and enjoy it and then share it with people. Praise God. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Again, thank you for joining me on today for Bible study with Pastor Kendra. Pursuit for His Presence Ministry. Today, October the 26th of 2020. I'd like to tell you the date in case, you know, you've gotten to... What time is it? 6.47 p.m. and you didn't know the date all day. <laughs> Great. So, amen. So, again, just thank you for joining us. So, on today, we are going to talk about wisdom, the wisdom of God. And you might say, oh, what is that? Okay. This is another, this is something that God has shown me about the wisdom of God that I wasn't really um, thinking about it as. And I know this is how the Lord brought it to me today. Because um, while I was at work, I remembered that I had just a snippet of a dream. It wasn't very long. But it was like someone was dragging a, a chain with, it looked like a football, the shape of kind of like a football attached to it. Um, I couldn't see really, I couldn't see, a, I don't remember a face or a silhouette. I mean, all I remember is a silhouette of a person. A chain, like a really thick chain. You know, almost like when they say ball and chain, that's what I saw. So it was just like a snippet. It was really, it was that fast. So all, so when I remember that, and I, I was at work, you know, I was working. And when I remember that, I said, Lord, was that, like, was that real? Did, did I, like, did I see that? Is that what you, sh did you show me that? Like in the night while I was, did you show me that? And so I just said, you know what? I need wisdom. I need wisdom. What, what, what is this about? What, what is it about? So, I began to um, simply go to wisdom scriptures. I Googled, while I was at work, wisdom scriptures, okay? And then I just started, like, saying them. With, uh, uh, that it, I went down the, the line, and I started saying them. And, you know, under my mask, because nobody, uh, you have to wear your mask at work. I was praying in the spirit saying, okay, thank you, Lord, that you give me wisdom. And I'm praying in the spirit because the word of God says that when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we can also interpret. So we can ask the Lord for that. So as I was doing that, the father was just downloading into me a new, broader aspect of wisdom and why we need wisdom and not just Go to Proverbs 4, 5 through 8. Now I can go ahead and give, I'll give you, I'm going to run down the list of all the scriptures that we're going to go over tonight, just so that you jot them down so when you can go back later to them, okay? Proverbs 4, 5 through 8, 2 Corinthians 1, 20. Colossians 1.9, 1 Corinthians 1.30, and 1 Corinthians 2.16, okay? So you want me to say that again? That's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 through 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. 
Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, and second, I mean, excuse me, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. Alrighty? So, let's start with Proverbs 4, 5 through 8. So, give you a little time to turn there. Proverbs 4, verses 5 through 8. Wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Now, before that, let me pause right there. Before that, when you start reading at the beginning of chapter 4 in Proverbs, it's the, the first um, verse says, Hear, O children, the instruction of a father. So this is instruction. This is a command. I, I wanted to, to point that out to you because... When we get to the fifth verse, this is a command. not a maybe, but it is a command from Father God. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Verse six. Do not forsake her. Who is her? Wisdom. Do not forsake wisdom and she will preserve you. Love wisdom and she will keep you. Verse 7. There. No, this is the when you're saying principle, this is the number one thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting of wisdom, what does it say? Get understanding. And verse 8 says, and exalt her, exalt wisdom, and she will promote you. Who is she? Wisdom. Wisdom will promote you. Wisdom will, and I'm filling in the, um, this here. Wisdom will bring you honor when you embrace wisdom. Glory to God. So all of this is a command from God, not a suggestion, not a, um, father God that we have to get wisdom. And not only do we need to get wisdom, but we get understanding as well. So you might say, okay, great. You're saying get wisdom, get understanding. What, how do I even do that? Where does the wisdom come from? Um, all of that. Okay. So, I'm glad you asked. When we're getting wisdom, it is imperative for us to, to know what, what we're doing with the wisdom. What we're doing in the wisdom. And Colossians 1.9 says, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, we don't cease to pray for you and to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will, of God's will, and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So what is God's will? That you be filled with all wisdom because it says the knowledge of his will. He wants you to know what his will is in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So as you know, as the writing goes on, the writer here in the in the word of God says that he wants you to be filled with with the full, deep and clear knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom. He says I, that he wants you to have comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God. That's basically what this is saying. So, during the season and the time that we are currently in, have you been overwhelmed by the pressure of decisions that you have had to make? Are you wrestling with, have you been wrestling or have, have you or are you now 
wrestling with challenging issues? Are you looking for direction of what to do? Should I look for a new job in COVID? Or should I wait until COVID is over to, 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 um, to seek a new job? Should I, uh, should my kids go to school or should I, you know, when, when we had a choice, remember there was a choice of whether to send your child to school hybrid, I think it was called, or to just send them, um, virtually, you know, all of these decisions, 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 decisions. So if you've answered yes to anything that I've said, then it's time um, if you've answered yes, then how many times in those needing to know what to do, have you said, I don't have a clue of what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't have a clue. I'm unsure of what to do. And then on top of that, when someone asks you, you say, um, they say, so what are you going to do? And what is your answer? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I should do. I know one thing. I'm scared or I know one thing. And I'm not making light of that because we are in a time that there that you must receive the wisdom of God for how you're to move forward for your family. But when we answer like that or when we say things like that, and I'm especially right now talking to, to a believer, when we're saying something like that, spiritually, that confession of saying we don't know what what we should do, we, we don't have the wisdom for it, that confession reinforces um, that we really don't have the answer when you really do have the answer if you're a born-again believer. It suggests that you, it, it is really suggesting that you do not trust the wisdom of God that is on the inside of you. And you might say, I don't have no, I don't have the wisdom of God on the inside of me. Yes, you do. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 1.30. If you didn't know, now you know that you actually have the wisdom of um, Jesus on the inside of you. It says, but of him, you are in Christ Jesus. Who are who, you? You and me. Whoever's in Christ Jesus. Whoever's born again. We're in Christ Jesus. Who became for us, who Jesus became for us wisdom from God. Jesus became for us righteousness from God. Jesus became to for us sanctification and Jesus became for us redemption. So these are all the things that we got from Jesus. So anytime we say that we don't feel like we are right with God or we have to do something to get right with God, if you are a believer, that's a lie according to the scripture. Anytime we say that we are not, we're not set apart or we are less than or, or we're um, an underling. Jesus set you apart. So anytime you say that um, you don't, you haven't been redeemed. Like the blood of Jesus hasn't done anything for you. You're just an old sinner saved by grace. That's a good one. There you go. If you're saying you're just an old sinner saved by grace, then that's also a lie. Because First Corinthians 30 says that Jesus, be, that G, that we're in Jesus. That's what it says, and that Jesus became redemption for us. So. We're in, Jesus is in us, right? Yes, when we receive Jesus, he is in us. And it says we're in Jesus. Woo. So it's got, we got some overlapping going on here, right? We have some Trinity stuff going on here. So we're in Jesus and Jesus is in us, us and, and Jesus is in God. So you have the wisdom of God and not just any old wisdom, just not regular raggedy wisdom. You have God's wisdom, the wisdom that was placed that is in the, on the inside of him just for you. Okay. So we have to reinforce the truth, not a lie. So maybe someone did ask you, 
about what do you... So maybe someone asks you now that I've said this to you. Think about it. What are you going to do? Instead of confessing, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. We need to, to declare out of our mouths and say, I believe. You know what? I believe I received the perfect wisdom of God. And by faith, I know exactly in here. Because oftentimes people say, I don't know what the will of God is. I don't really know what God wants me to do. All right. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 1.20. 2 Corinthians. Yes. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1. Verse 20. 2 Corinthians 1.20. It says. For all the promises of God. All his promises in him are yes and in God, amen. And amen means so be it to the glory of God through us, through us. So for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. So let me just put a pin here. God is never going to tell you to do something that is not his promise. He's never going to, um, his promise, I, I, what I'm trying to say is his promise is his will. Whatever he promises in his word is his will. So we don't have to go around saying, I don't know the will of God. His promises are his will. Why? Because those are the things that he has said he is going to do. Got it? That's what his will is. So anytime we have confessed, just repent right now. Father, I repent for ever saying, I don't know what your will is. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know whether to go left. Or I don't know whether to go right. I, I don't know whether to choose good. or I don't know whether to choose. No, because the word of God says that, that in him, that he gives you a choice and he says, choose life. So, and in choosing life, what do we have? We multiply, we replenish the earth, we subdue it. We have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That's a promise that that's what we're supposed to have, that that's what we're supposed to do. And God does not promise something that he cannot fulfill. And then, so when you find that promise, so say you have a prayer, I mean, yes, you have a prayer request or something that you need to know about. Because remember, I came to you and I said, did you ever have an an issue or you ever say, I don't know what to do or whatever. Okay. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're supposed to do. According to what the word of God says, we're to find the promise. This is before we start praying. Oftentimes we start praying and asking God for stuff without even asking for the wisdom of God. And remember in Proverbs four, it says that wisdom is the principal thing. We just start like mouthing off scripture. If, if somebody comes to us and says, you know, I need prayer for whatever, you know, we just say, okay, cool. Let me pray. Yeah, can't, they did a bullshit in the name of Jesus. Something, something, something. No, we're supposed to, the principal thing, which is first of all, we're to ask him for wisdom because asking him for wisdom gets us right to where we need to be right to the root of whatever the issue is. Instead of praying all around it, it gets us right to the very thing if we ask him for wisdom first. And then, you know, you might say, okay, um, if somebody walks up to you and says, pray for whatever, and you'll say, okay, give me one moment. Let's just ask the Lord for wisdom. Let's ask him for wisdom. And then not only ask him for wisdom, but expect to receive it. Why should you respect to receive it? Because... It's on the inside of you. Why? Because Jesus, you're in Jesus and Jesus is in God. And, and it's, it's the mind of God that we're seeking after, right? It's the wisdom of God that we're seeking after. And the word of God says that Jesus was made wisdom unto us. Do you see how all of these things just, oh, I, they overlap and they run together? So, okay, so when someone comes to you and say, can you pray for so-and-so? All right, we need to start out our prayer and say, Father, 
All right, let's get ready. All right, Father, your word says that the principal thing is is that so and so needs wisdom. So we ask for, we believe, and we receive your wisdom right now in the name of Jesus. Now, let me say this to you. For those of you who are born again believers, speaking in other tongues is uh, the way, is a way, is the way, one of the, that the Lord has given us to get what is in our spirit man up and out. So, the gift of speaking in tongues is a free gift. It's for every believer. You can look in Acts and you can see it. Speaking in other tongues is for you. And you might say, well, you know what? I, I've never done it. And if God wants me to do it, then he'll do it. Uh, wrong answer. That is not, it doesn't, op he doesn't work like that. That's, I used to, to, um, I used to tell my good friend when she would say, well, uh, why won't God stop me from going over there to, to get what I shouldn't get? You know, why should he stop? Why, why isn't he stopping me from, from being addicted to this? Or why is he not stopping me from, um, from going over there to that man if he's no good? Or why is he not stopping me? Hold up. God is not a puppeteer. He is not the, the puppeteer. Isn't that what the thing? And you're not the puppet on the string. It doesn't op. He doesn't operate like that. We can't just expect him to like slap the drugs out of our hand. He can't expect us to, uh, we can't expect God to just um, make you want to uh, sit in your house and not get in your car and go to that man's house. It doesn't work like that. It, it does not work like that. But we have to, and I don't even know how I got off track with that, but I, somebody need to know. It doesn't work like that because you keep asking God to do so and so. It it doesn't, the word of God says how we're to receive from him. The word of God says how we're to live out this life. You know how we say, well, God, just take the sadness away from me. Or God, just take the fear away from me. Y'all, that is a prayer that I'm sorry to say will not be answered. Why? Because God has said in his word, and this is just a little, then we're going to get back on track. Because God has said in his word that we as a believer are to fear not. That we as a believer are to what? Er, 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 resist the devil. We're, excuse me. We're to submit unto God. We're to resist the devil and he will flee. So when we're asking God to, to take away the fear, how is he going to do that? When that is a responsibility of ours. And when I say responsibility, I know you don't like that word, but he has, he has given us, he has endowed us with the authority. There we go. He has in, in, endowed us with the authority to, to come against scorpions and serpents and, and, and the demonic. Not to be over people, but to come against darkness, to come against the enemy, to come against Satan. That is the authority that Jesus has given us, or that's the authority God has given us in Christ Jesus. So when we're asking him to take away the fear, God, why aren't you taking this fear away from me? Or God, why aren't you taking this sadness away from me? Or why aren't you, you know, why, why am I, y'all, we have to arise and know what we have in the new covenant, what we have as new covenant believers and as new, because as new covenant believers, we have the authority to say to the mountain, be thou removed. Uh, fear, you go from me now in Jesus name. All right. You might have to say it 20 times, but guess what? It's got to get up out of here because the words of God says, as I submit unto God and I resist the devil, that's the instruction. He must flee. So that means that if, if I need to repeat, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If I have to do that all day long, then guess what? 
I need to do it. Because why? As I'm doing that, I'm submitting myself unto God. Why? Because the word of God is truth. That's the word of God. These, these are the words of God. I'm submitting myself unto God. The enemy must resist. He must retreat. He must retreat. Now, does that mean that he won't come back up against you because the weapons um, uh, that are weapons will be formed against you, but they don't have to prosper. But every lying tongue, we have to refute it. You and I, that, that is a part of being this soldier in the, you know, people say, want to say being in the soldier in the army. Being a soldier in the army of the Lord. That's something that the Lord has given us jurisdiction over in this world. So we have to do that. Okay. But let me get back to, um, let me come back to this. So knowing the will of God. So we're praying for somebody and we ask for the wisdom we ask God first for wisdom because it's the principal thing. Wisdom and understanding. You got to have wisdom so, for you, so you can understand, okay? So we're asking him for the wisdom, Father. What is the wisdom of, uh, we're asking for wisdom. Because, y'all, most often our eyes are so tunnel vision. The Lord told me tunnel vision today. Isaiah 55, 8 through, through 11. at time that we're only concerned with what the problem is I my house note you know you might say my house note is a thousand dollars and I need a thousand dollars God I need a thousand dollars I need a thousand dollars all right so what this is what you've been praying to the Lord Lord, I, I need a thousand dollars I thank you for I just I need a thousand dollars I thank you for a thousand dollars I thank you for a thousand dollars. I thank you for a thousand dollars, Lord. I'm seeking your face. Your word says I need to seek your face. I'm seeking your face. That's what I'm doing. I'm seeking you. I'm coming to you and I'm asking you for a thousand dollars. Okay. Let's put a pin there because this is what how the Holy Spirit corrected me today. Wisdom is the principal thing. So what I need to do first and foremost is ask him for wisdom. And when I ask him for wisdom, he is going to tell me what it is I need because a thousand dollars is not the is may not be the issue. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're thinking that a thousand or I'm thinking that the thousand dollars that I need to pay my mortgage is the issue. No, if God gave me a thousand dollars today, it's not gonna solve the problem because I'm gonna be in the same rut next come next month when my mortgage is due or when my rent is due or when my car note is due D do you understand what i'm saying so that isn't that doesn't fix the issue to ask him for the thousand dollars how did we even get there to where we needed a thousand dollars so the holy spirit said to me you ask for wisdom because he is going to tell you beyond what your tunnel vision is seeing. So, um, so, so the issue the Lord was, you know, was, was telling me is that first of all, I don't believe that I have the wisdom of God on the inside of me. Y'all that was made. That's major. You got to believe that you have the wisdom. It's not out here somewhere, you know, Oh God. And I'm just being transparent. You oftentimes you looking up here, you looking out there, you're looking up, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. No, the wisdom of God is here. And you must believe that the wisdom, and not only believe, but we've been built with a believer. A, I call it kind of like a believer switch on the inside of us. That's just the way every human being was built. Whether you believe in Jesus Christ or you believe in Muhammad. Or you believe in uh, uh, I, whoever, it doesn't matter. You were built, your, the way in which you were built, which is after God and his likeness and his image, whether you want to serve him or not, he, he built you just like him. You have the capability to believe. Now, oftentimes, it's easier to believe the bad than it is to believe the good. Why? Because we're so bombarded with the bad. 
We're so bombarded with the with the world. All we do is see, we um we see with our eyes, and that's how we maneuver through life, which is carnally. Carnally is using our five senses instead of walking by faith and not by sight. And again, what is faith? Faith is a substance, it's a force that the Father created to bring things that are in the spirit realm into the natural realm. That's that y'all, that's what faith is. It's a force, it's a substance that brings what you can't see from the spiritual realm into manifestation in the natural realm so you can actually see it. But God says to us that we have to believe that we receive when we when we're saying it right then we don't we shouldn't have we're, we're not trying to be like um what's his name um i believe it's andrew uh in the bible when he was like if, if i don't see that philip if i don't see that what's Tom, Thomas, thank you. Jesus, I'm Philip Thomas, everybody. That I don't, if I don't see the nails in his hands, if I don't see, um, you know, the, the gash in his side, I'm not going to believe. No, we are not supposed to operate like that. That's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is knowing that it's already on the inside of you. Why? Because the word says it's there. And our job is to confess the word, to say the word again and again and again until you get it y'all basically this is the game that this and i should i'm not calling this this is not a game this is the life that we live as believers this is how we're to live so when we find we're, we're to go to the lord let me come back to this how you're to pray so when i find a promise when i find the promise that covers my situation so whatever it is i needed whatever answer i needed to prayer then I base my prayer on that promise, not on random prayer. I go to the promise and you can, you ask Holy Spirit, ask him, Father, what is the promise that coincides with what I'm asking you? Because you want the right answer, right? Not that he, he does not give wrong answers, but you want the answer. And you want to know whether or not it's a spirit, you know, because it could very well be, y'all, most often it's a spiritual issue. It's something that he told us to do way back then that we didn't even really pay attention to. But now we done come into something that's a hot mess. And we're like, well, Lord, I need a thousand dollars. Well, back then he told you to, it could have been something as simple as so a $10 seed. That we didn't do at the time because we consulted our bank account or we consulted our pocketbook or we consulted throwing caution to the wind, doing what he said and going on about our business. We're too busy thinking about the bill that we have to pay. And if we sow the seed of ten dollars, I'm not going to five dollars to pay the bill. Well, dude, if I mean, well. My mom says, stop saying people do. If you only have $25, you need to go ahead and sow the $5. Because, because it's, we, you, you, we basically don't have enough anyway. Okay? So, so we ask for wisdom so that we can find the very promise that we need. So that we're not praying random prayers. But we're praying a prayer and we're standing on a scripture or a, 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 um, or a couple of scripture that will get to the very root of what the issue is. So that it can eradicate it. So that it's plucked up from the root. So once we do that, then we, then we will know what his will is. Whatever, his, whatever the promise is. We know what his will is. And we won't, and, and he won't have... Lord, I don't even know what I wrote. So then we'll know what his will is. Because we're trying to answer spiritual problems with a carnal mind. That's what happens. I need $1,000. How am I going to get $1,000? And here goes your mind. What does your mind do first? You are thinking of everything you can sell. You are thinking of every account that you can go to to pull it from. You're thinking of who owes you money. You are thinking of how you can rob Peter to pay Paul. This is what you're doing. First, this is what I'm doing first. This is what God said is the halt 
where we need to, to not do that. So Holy Spirit, well, let me say this. Spiritual problems must be discerned in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead us to the very promise to the very and when i say the promise i'm talking about a scripture to the very scripture particularly that covers our situation so when we have an issue that arises instead of going straight for the jugular what we need to do is to seek wisdom because nine times out of ten it's a spiritual issue it's not just that i need a thousand dollars it's not just that my leg is hurting why is my leg hurting why it, why do I have this illness that keeps coming back? Why can I not why am I not walking? Why is my child continually acting like this? Why is instead of just praying, Lord, help my child with the behavior, help my y'all, God was showing me today that I we got to get deeper in him. That he's more than just the superficial. He's more than just the tunnel vision, okay? So The words that we are to no longer say, that the Lord said we are to no longer say is that I don't know what to do. He said, take that out of your vocabulary. Stop. We, we're not going to say from this moment forward, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to not say I don't have a clue. Because the word of God is sure. And yes, it, it might take time. Um under the teaching of the word of God to become skillful in, um, in his wisdom and, and how to get his wisdom and how to receive his wisdom. Anything takes time. Everything takes time. Even wine to make wine takes time, right? So we cannot expect everything to just, uh, the finest of wine takes a good amount of time, right? We're to grow in wisdom and in stature. So let faith let patience have its perfect work work let faith just walk you through this so that you can say so that you can start saying and that you can believe that the wisdom of God is on the inside of you because again God showed me that these are not it's not the issue is just not that you don't have whatever it is whatever it is you think you need he said, that's not the issue. He said, the issue is deeper than that. But in order to, to hit the nail on the head, in order to get to the root of what the issue is so that we don't have to keep coming back to this again and again and again, wisdom is the principal thing that we need. And when you might say, well, I don't hear the voice of God. Yes, you do. Stop saying you don't hear the voice of God. Stop confessing you don't hear the voice of God. You need to say, I believe I receive the hearing the voice of God. I believe I receive hearing the voice of God. Oh, I hear the voice of God. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. You know, I, I had a lady say to me once, um, you know, when we were new in the faith, I would, I would say, I would often say, you know, Holy Spirit said to me or the, or the Lord said to me, and they said to me, the the person said to me, they they said something. God said something to you. I've been a believer all my you know as long as I live, and I've never heard God say anything to you. God say anything to me is what the person said. So, in other words, they were telling me that that's not true. That you can't hear God, but yes, you can. Let's stop confessing what we cannot do in God. And start confessing what we can. Start declaring what we can. And just say, I believe I receive God's, the hearing of God's voice. I believe I receive wisdom because it's on the inside of me. That's what we have to start doing. Anything you say repetitively, as my um, organic chemistry teacher would say, Ultraves, again and again. Anything that we do again and again. He would tell us to do problems again and again again and again again and again anything you do again and again you start you believe you start to believe if anybody if somebody tells you you're ugly all day long multiple times a day you're gonna start to believe it 
So do that with the word of God so that you believe what the word of God says is true. Because his wisdom is on the inside of you. Every re everything you would ever need is already on the inside of you. That's what he wanted me to tell you today. That everything you need from God, if you're a believer, he, it's already in there. In abundance. Not just a little bit. In abundance. Joy is in there in abundance. Faith is in there in abundance. Uh. You having an unction from the Holy One. That's an abundance. Your healing. Ha ha ha. Healing is already on the inside of you. Now you need to ask for wisdom of how to get it out. Oh, I'm stepping on the. You need to ask for wisdom for how to get it up and out into this thing we call flesh. Got me? All right, so get your communion. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you that you've been, that through your son, Jesus, you've been made unto us wisdom. We thank you, Lord God, that it is your perfect will to give unto us wisdom. We thank you, Lord God, that wisdom is the principal thing. And not only is it the principal thing you said to, that we can have understanding. So because you said that, God, we honor that word today. We choose to believe it. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, we choose to believe your word above our experiences. We choose to believe your word above our parents' experiences, our grandma's experience, or Miss Sally at church, or Brother Joe, or Deacon uh, Davis. We choose to believe your word above the news. CNN, News Channel 4, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. We choose to believe what your word says regarding healing. We choose to believe what your word says regarding prosperity. We choose to believe what your word says regarding our children being saved. We choose to believe your word, God. And... We thank you for the broken body of Christ Jesus. For your word says that as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of you. And as we're doing it in remembrance of you and we partake, it says that we will not be sick weekly or die prematurely. Prematurely, It says it in Corinthians. So partake mm, of your born again. Right. Mm. To have your youth renewed like the eagles. Ooh. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the cup, the blood, the cup, the blood that was shed on the cross for, our, for, for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you, Lord God, that, that we're not only forgiven. And as we partake of this, our sins are away from us. So we can take this and not feel bad or not feel guilty because Jesus has already, do you hear me, taken care of that. So you can come boldly to his throne. I don't care what you did last night. There's grace there for you not to do it again. All right? For you not to keep doing it. God, God is awesome, y'all. And his promise is that no man, he, that he desires for no one to perish. So we drink of his protection. And the forgiveness of our sins. I thank you for joining me on today for Bible study with Pastor Kendra. We just love, I love having this time with you. I love, you know, actually seeking the Lord for what he desires for you to hear from his heart. So I pray that you have a wonderful remaining week in the Lord. Remember to share this with someone who has 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 questions who's always been you know they don't know what to do go ahead and share this with them and um remember you can go back and see this on our face our youtube page 
pursuit for his presence. You can also see Kevin's video, Hallelujah, We Sing. You can also see Shonda's morning prayer. Y'all, do you know she prays for people in the morning? And sometimes the Lord has her to prophesy over you. So if you need a word from the Lord, I suggest you come on to our Facebook live page, Pursuit for His Presence, at 7 a.m. on Monday mornings and get a word from the Lord. All